Hi, this is Manuel, the Telemature Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel. This episode will be all about 3D printing and I'm going to show you in detail my setup, show you a little bit of overview when you want to be entering that hobby in a hobby like 3D printing and what you can do with it uh, on hand of an example. I'm getting asked a lot or I see frequently frequently asked a lot the question of uh, what external microphone to use for the TrueSTX and there is no external microphone available that is plug and play. There have been several options. People have uh, been developing their own adapter PCBs and uh, whatnot. <clears throat> and I think HB9HEM, I think it was, um, was had developed uh, a 3D printed housing to use two 3.5 millimeter uh, male connectors in a housing together that would fit uh, the distance of the TrueSDX uh, sockets. When I downloaded that, tried to print that, I figured out that it would not match my uh, specific um, 3.5 millimeter connectors I had on hand, so I designed it from scratch because I liked this idea. And I printed today. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to build the microphone and to answer your question what microphone to use. I'm not really interested in microphones. I'm not so much into SSB. However, I see the benefit of an external microphone. But I wanted to add another benefit and that is the, the need of an external speaker. So I bought the only microphone that I could find that has an active external speaker. See that? That has a battery inside. It's almost as big as the True SDX. You can see that. But never mind. It will, it will, uh, it will fit two purposes. One is external microphone, blah blah blah, and the other one is an active speaker. So we don't need to carry our external speaker with us. We have that in our microphone. In case I want to do CW, I can use that as well and clip it to whatever you know. And in case I want to do SSP, I can still use it. So that's the plan today, and I did that by 3D printing this adapter, soldering everything together, and I'm going to show you that in detail today. Stay tuned. Inspired by some other guy, I have designed uh, my a little housing that can hold two 3.5 millimeter male connectors, uh, and we can screw that together. We have on, on one side, we have uh, counter sunk uh, for a screw head and on this side we have an hexagon for a nut and now I'm going to 3d print this for this I've loaded everything up to my Prusa slicer I've configured everything and now I'm going to print that it's going to take 35 minutes and let's see uh, you can tell by the stuff that's surrounding those printers uh, that they are not being used very often. It's uh, right now I'm using them as tables. I bought them to to do serial printing of uh, housings, which I did for a time, and then I said no, that's actually not my thing. Um, and, but they were here anyway. They do not require maintenance, or they do not uh, eat bread. <laughs> as we say in Germany. Um, they are here just in case, but my main printer is this one. Uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about buying a printer, seriously, I can only recommend you the Prusa, the original Prusa uh, i3 Mark III, because um, this guy here, it costs a little bit. Mm, it's, it's in the range of 1000 plus uh, euros when you buy that assembled. But this thing really works and it can manage all materials that are on the market, almost any materials that are on the market. It comes with Prusa Slicer uh, with pre-configured um, setups. So it's, it's really easy start and this thing never failed on me. It's, it's actually, it's a, it's a work machine. So this is the reason why He's getting the job. I have some, some extras here. I've got a Octoprint, a Raspberry Pi configured for that. I have a camera here. 
that will show you the um, <clears throat> the time lapse that you will see in this video. Um, the Prusa has its own probe inside. It will probe the bed uh, on nine points uh, to make sure it's it's level and to set the distance between nozzle and bed uh, for every point. So it makes sure that your, your first layer is perfect. That's something uh, Chinese printers often have that to be adjusted by some stupid screw and springs. Modern, more, more modern ones, like even the wiper here, they have a unique method to probe on the bed. That's also an interesting thing. They are using the nozzle, but that's also at the same time, it's the, the weak point of the system. And the printer has started. We can see now the probing procedure. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now it starts to the priming point where it's uh, priming the nozzle. See this fat line? And now it starts with the print. Another important property of this printer is the changeable bed sheets. Um, this makes it possible that you can react to different materials. And uh, yeah, here you can see True SDX uh, remains basically. Um, and the other benefit is you can just remove it, swap it out, uh, put another one on there, restart the print while everything can cool down out of the printer or it's easier to remove the prints from the bed because you can bend the sheets to make a removal easier. I'm not using OctoPrint, the Raspberry Pi, uh, on a regular basis, but one of the practical aspects is that you can monitor your print remotely and you see what's going on there. In case something would go wrong, you could see it from your living room while your printer's running in the basement or whatever. So printer's ready, printer's cool enough, so parts can be released. Let's have a look at them. So, looking them up close. Yeah. With the light, they don't look too pretty, too good, but you get the idea, I guess. Speaker, mic, labeled, same here. Now let's, let's try to make this happen. I opened up the microphone, the Retevis microphone, and checked the pins here. They are cleanly labeled with uh, microphone, speaker, PTT, and VSS. VSS is obviously ground as it has those uh, connections to the plane here. And I measured all that and could confirm that um, red was ground, blue was microphone, black was speaker and green was PTT. So I'm going to solder that here. This is the, you can see that, it goes on like this. Um, this is the microphone connector and uh, microphone is this one. This is obviously ground and this is PTT. <clears throat> I'm going to connect both uh, connectors with ground. Um, in, in theory, it would be enough to solder just one, but imagine using only one of them like I will do probably when using the active speaker only um, and putting a, a PTT, sorry, a paddle or something like that in the other jack of the <clears throat> True SDX, then in this case it's, it's practical to have this uh, ground connection, ground on both. Otherwise it will not work or will have additional uh, ground length, which is not, not good to have. <clears throat> then I will connect audio to both of those pins and this is obviously ground and that's it um, and <laughs> I wanted to show you now 
where you can look that up on dl2man.de slash, uh, I think it's manual, mm, where the, the wire is, and realize that my tablet is so discharged, I needed to, to charge it. Don't be this guy, don't be me. That's never a good thing to have this uh, completely discharged. I forgot to switch it off, so yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to secure the stuff with a little bit of super glue. And then I'm, I'm back and show you the results before putting the top cover on. I've soldered everything together. Um, let me see. Blue microphone. This one, green is PTT, is the tip, red is ground, is this here, bridging over to this. And those two are connected together and soldered to the black wire. And microphone screw together. Now before gluing and screwing everything up, I'm going to test that of course. Seems to work. Yeah. yeah, everything's fine. Okay. Before screwing everything together, I'm just adding a little bit of glue. Like so. especially in the cable that's our um, cable securing and then I'm screwing everything now together. I've added some pressure to let it sit there for like an hour or so um, then we call it good so that was another success story um, everything's possible when you have a 3d printer I mean your imagination is the limit and there are a lot of smart peoples out there thinking of a lot of stuff that I didn't think of. So I stole this idea. I redesigned it, adapted it to my purposes. And I didn't need to go out of house. I didn't need to buy anything uh, externally. I just used what I had on hand. By 3D designing a custom device, printing it, executing it all within one afternoon. No problem at all. A 3D printer can help us in our amateur radio. I mean, the housing of the True STX is 3D printed. Uh, my antenna accessories are 3D printed. You can, you can do endless things. Your imagination is the limit. I hope this was useful. If you want me to talk about anything in specific um, around the 3D printing topic or whatever, I, I don't, I don't uh, know what you want to know from me in specific. Um, Please ask me in the comments, please comment down below what you want me to do in my next videos. I am, I'm trying to make that possible. See you next time, 73. Bye bye.